This is a really cool ongoing story. How's your French? No, I have no French. No French. We're flying to Quebec for a pretty important day for Mikey's project. Yeah, there's some French for you. It's perfect. You're going to be there for... This is like a major uh, yeah. milestone. It is, yeah. So the objective for me from a filmmaking perspective on this one is to try to help Mikey tell that story and turn around an episode really fast if I can and then publish something so that I get some traction for him toward the final push toward D-Day. So I'm not going to be able to turn this episode around the same day like Mikey's been doing. Of course, the guy pulls out an air grill right when I start talking. Steve, what's happening? I don't know, I'm gonna ask you the same thing. So you make a plan here? Jeez, it's kind of, I don't even know how to show my camera to your camera. Like, it's the paradox. It's a huge paradox. How are you liking it so far? I just got here and got safety briefed. You guys are thorough, man. That was probably one of the best safety briefings I've ever had for something like this. <laughs> Jeez, I guess I'm holding the camera right in my face. <laughs> what do you wanna do? What's, what's the plan here? Let's take our cameras. <laughs> we got the poses right. I wish I had a mirror to show you. The one thing, I guess, is is you're the first person in 125 episodes that is on site that knows about uh, filming and capturing the moment. Because there's a lot of pilots, a lot of mechanics, but not very many people are capturing the moment in such a modern way. We were crushing it by doing daily. I don't know how you do it. Like, <laughs> I publish twice a month, three times a month at best, and it almost kills me. Oh yeah, 125 straight days a day. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to embrace a little bit of you and get whatever the heck I'm gonna produce here turned around fast so we can get it out there so we can see the last month as you guys head towards D-Day to fly this thing. It's kind of amazing that you're gonna fly this thing. Do you want to kind of see what I'm doing yeah, right now? Yeah, yeah. In this to that? I'll show you. So basically, I shut my camera off like that. Yeah. I always have an editing suite set up no matter where I am. And I always have my Final Cut Pro always logged. Put the GoPro cable in the GoPro. GoPro Hero Black pops up. <laughs> so you're like literally oh, yeah. filmmaking in real time. In real time. You get a shot and then you cut the shot into your timeline. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, import. So here's all my episodes. Yep. And the footage is going to be coming in and everything is in real time. You got the shot of me arriving yeah. like an hour ago. And... Yeah, well I'll, I'll put it in right now. <laughs> so I'll show you. So here's you coming in. I'm talking here. And see, I'm going so quick. Uh, Dusty has just put in the new tail wheel. Yeah. And then uh, there is your entrance. Stella just uh, hijacked somebody. <laughs> now I'm more of a non-linear storyteller than Mikey, so I'll be intercutting some learning moments from the flight. So I know you're not supposed to fly with polarized sunglasses, and today I just grabbed these ones real quick. They're completely erasing. Oh yeah, this is black. Yeah. And yeah, when you were pushing the buttons, I was like, oh, I guess he's turning it on. <laughs> and I look like, oh, it's on. What if I get a camera to see that with these glasses and I put them in front of it? Obviously, this is an issue for avionics, but I use these glasses for fishing and boating because it removes glare, which can cause a problem when you're looking for traffic because it can make it harder to see an airplane that might have reflected the sun. Here you are, you're coming. You guys, give it a thumbs up that you're here. Yeah. And that's how I do it. And then if I'm happy with it, I kind of sign off on that part of the film or all that part so I don't have to go back. Right. And then so I can just push forward until the very end. Yeah. And usually the last shot of the day is probably 45 minutes from when the person gets to watch it. So, because that's how long it takes for YouTube. Yeah. So boom, boom, boom. So it's fresh, fresh, fresh. So what these guys are doing here is pretty amazing. They've got this airplane that's basically been sitting rotting for years. And they're saving it, quite literally. The uh, series that Mikey's producing is called Plane Savers. He's 125 or so episodes in every day, publishing a, an episode about the restoration of this airplane that's supposed to fly in one month from today. This is May 6th. I'm gonna try to publish this episode as soon as I can to get some awareness to this story so you can follow along as he finishes the final month to get this airplane flying for D-Day. I can't believe based on the status of the airplane like that they're gonna, they think it's gonna fly in that short amount of time, but if well, right now it looks like it. That they're on it, you think? Yeah, so? they're on it. I think it's it's, it's baffling. Yeah, but he's got the team. I mean, the key is it's not quantity, quality of people. 
Yeah. Like he doesn't have a massive team. Right. And Bring that's what it. people would say, well, how could you do it with that few people? Well, if you have the right few people, yeah. you can accomplish a lot. Yeah, he's got, I mean, if anyone could do this, it's him and his team. I mean, they, those guys, if anyone knows DC-3s, Buffalo Airways, Mikey. I was always a fan of the show, so it's pretty cool to see him doing this. Why am I doing it? There's the cheesiest quote, and you see it in all the times. It's like, any movie about Everest, they go like, why are you climbing it? And they always say, because it's there. Yeah. And, and it's actually true. Like, the, if this airplane wasn't here, and it wasn't a D-Day machine, we wouldn't be doing it. So, it was never my choice. It's the airplane's choice. It's, uh, it's every person here. Um, every person here has their own individual story. People that are starting their careers to people that are retired is, is everybody's got a story and everybody has a reason to be here. And I'm just, my reason's just a small reason. And uh, I'm just here to facilitate the opportunity for this airplane to fly again. But it's really doing it in itself. It's all analogies, like feel the dreams, you build it and they'll come. Yeah, you got a team, man. You got a killer team here. I was so naive. The, like, if you go back to episode, I think it was 100, which is only 25 days ago, um, of when we showed up and we started working on this airplane, we literally just showed up. Oh, wait for that. Yeah, it's real, it's yeah. happening. Yeah. It's happening. So literally, we just showed up um, thinking that we're gonna get this airplane to fly by ourselves. And it's really the people that every day someone new shows up and that's, the trip. The school here, the Cole National Day Aerotechnic, is just being insane. This is the biggest kept secret in Canadian aviation is the school. The amount of equipment and staff they have is astronomical and I do my best to beat that drum of this place exists. If you want to do anything to do with aviation, this is like Disneyland, so check it out. I got a quick tour of the school and was definitely impressed. And something that really struck me was there was this beautiful RV6 sitting out front that I didn't realize was directly connected to the school. This is cool because I'm going to build an RV14. All right. So that's a six? Yeah, that's a six. Exactly. Yeah. So this is a student built airplane, but the rivets don't look bad. <laughs> they are very, very nice, you know? They are yeah. very clean, flat surfaces. And just to be clear, you build all of the components from scratch. Exactly. So I can show you the jig. So it's pretty cool that Mikey's got access to some really skilled laborers and students that are learning from helping him out with the DC-3, but at the same time, he's getting legit, awesome, skilled workers to help do a really great job on this airplane. There's a whole maintenance department and all kinds of other stuff that I don't even have time to get into, but I was just really impressed with the scratch building aspect of what they do here. They will learn how to design it. Uh, we'll also learn how to program the machines to cut out the sheet metal parts or to do the machine parts. So what we've done actually is to simply take the blueprints and then after that we did all the tooling. So this is one of the sections of the RV6 that we took from the blueprints and the students completely rebuilt. So the advantage of this is you've got a 3D representation and uh, if we look at the parts here, what we will do is uh, if I take a part, I can actually go get it, look at it individually, and when it comes time to uh, produce the part, I actually send a program on a uh, router, and it will cut it out. So here, the advantage with the software that we use, this is the finished folded part, but we can unfold it to be able to machine the flat pattern. Right, because that needs to be machined, cut out, and then put on a press to stamp it or whatever. Exactly. So if you order a kit, they will send you these pieces, but you guys actually make them. We make them. Yeah. I think it took us like 15 years to do the first one, but the goal wasn't to build an RV6 as quickly as possible, but to build it the best we could. And so we probably did each component at least five times over. Uh, we always had some kind of mishap. The wing was finished, the student would drop a toolbox on it or whatnot. So instead of trying to patch it up, we'd rather start all over again. So the RV6 that you see down there, I know that uh, when Transport Canada looked at it, they thought it was one of the best built they had seen. And that's because we really did it in a meticulous fashion. 
the one thing is, is volunteers come from expert level to, you know, the bare, bare minimum. And it's kind of like you try a few things and then you fit in. So it's like a buffet. You try a little bit and wherever you like the most, or wherever is you're efficient, is kind of where you're going. Stella, never, my girlfriend, never ever painted an airplane. I don't know if she's even painted a room before. But she's hand painting this airplane, so she's learning as she's going. And, and she's gonna try to get it painted before it flies? Yeah. The whole damn yeah. thing. Wow. Yeah. So we already got you to work? Yeah. What are you working on? Oh, well, just starting to scrape some paint, loose paint off and oh, clean up flaps. inside for the flaps, yeah. I appreciated Michael joining me for this one. I had to take a break from my IFR training to help tell this story, but I'm gonna be getting back to it in June. You're from Bravo X ray. Looks like there's a fire traffic at your uh, 12:30 for about three miles. Since I got my uh, instrument in January, every cross country is oh yeah filed. Yeah, I'm setting up a home sim that's going to have a 4:30 physical unit in it just to play with, so that I can really get used to the technology. I'm not sure what you would want to do with So we're doing the whole thing like that. That's 100% French. That's a good reason to be on an instrument because. In terms of knowing where people are and things, you're not going to know. Yeah. So this way, we don't really have to worry either. It was good to get to do some real world IFR flying on the way to Quebec. And I'm glad I fit this trip in, as our timing was really good. That was last night. They were hoping to get the engines running today. That's why I thought, it's perfect you're going to be there for, this is like a major uh, yeah. milestone. It is, that. yeah. So what are you working on here? My job to, uh, to install the exhaust section. And we have here a sort of a joint, um, like this one here, which is going to be held by bolts and some springs, so it has like a a, a free um, a free movement during the the engine run. And so uh, they just put the engine on. And so right now I'm I'm trying to to figure out a way to align the the, the bolts together. And, uh, Yep. It needs a little bit of nudging. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is happening. They're opening the hangar door. This airplane is going to go out there, and they're going to try to start these engines for the first time. Um, okay, just a quick announcement. As you guys know, we're going to do uh, an engine run slash test here very, very quickly down at the work site. One more time for everyone. If you hear code one, you will all immediately, immediately leave to the master room. Okay? No questions, no running around, no pictures, no videos, no nothing. Mikey published an amazing episode covering this, so definitely check his channel. Shooting and texting at the same time, that's epic. Yeah. I'll probably be speeding up the footage so I can ruin the audio by me talking. <laughs> I'll use Everybody this Everybody move! <laughs> right now! So trying to get this one turned around within 48 hours of shooting it was a real challenge for me. This is not typically how I work, but I ran out of time because I had to catch a flight for my next production trip. So I've got a GoPro in here to uh, watch the first engine run. So I hope you enjoy it in the state that it's in. Oh man, a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, thousands and thousands of man hours. And uh, she's alive, she's alive, one step closer. So Benoit, all that time. Two years ago, April 2017, we get the stuff back first, it did not work, but you made it happen. <laughs> and really, it's, it's not the first flight, but it's really emotional. It was so much, you know, time, effort that we put in that, that after you, you, you come and you make everything happen, really big, big thank you. I love it. I love it because what you're doing is, is, is condensed versions of, uh, of television, right, yeah. right? So the people on television are jealous of you because you can get stuff out. Right. And I'm a little, the next level where not level of quality, of course, because you guys, you're insanely a lot better. But just like, I gotta get content out and make it interesting. Well, you did a great job, man. It's really engaging. Wow.